Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Jubilant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started sewing with your machine. To start with, the factory default setting for this machine when you first turn it on is going to be stitch number three. That's this stitch right here and that means your needle is going to be in the center position. So you have, um, like if you were going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance, your center position, your 5 8 inch seam would be this mark right here. Now if you decided you wanted to do a left hand needle position, number one, now your 5 8 inch seam allowance would be that mark right there or this mark back here. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. I kind of prefer my uh, center needle position. Now, you notice that I changed stitches with this jog dial. So you can quickly get, like if I wanted to get to stitch number 50, I just move that along until I got a little bit closer then move it stitch by stitch until I got there. So that is a easy, quick way to get to your stitches. And you can go either direction, it doesn't matter. In fact, you can even go past stitch 80 and get back to stitch number three. So it's easy, quick way to change it. That's your jog dial. Okay, <clears throat> now, in my overview video, I did talk a little bit about this button here. That is for doing twin needle sewing. So when you're doing twin needle sewing, it looks a little bit like this. You have two spools of thread, one on an auxiliary spool pin here, and then your regular spool pin here. And then, of course, you use your same single uh, bobbin thread. And a twin needle looks like this right here. That's a twin needle, and they'd have to be of course, um, threaded separately, not using the needle threader. Okay, but you can do wonderful decorative stitches this way. <clears throat> that's what that's for. Now this guy here is a really useful thing. Let me show you what it looks like just with that turned off. When you're sewing, you wanna have a back stitch at the beginning and ending of your seam. So what you do is you start sewing, press that, Hold it, as long as you're holding it, you've got your back stitch. Press it, hold it again, there you go, you're done. Take your fabric out of there, cut your thread, and there you go. Now you notice these two back stitches, one's a little bit longer than the other one. If I wanted them nice and even, or if I want that built in, all I've gotta do is press that. Now watch what happens. I'll try and take it nice and slow. See, I didn't even touch the button. And once I'm done, I can take my foot off the pedal, touch the reverse key, watch what happens. It slowly marches back about four stitches, three stitches or so, and stops right there. So that's a nice feature to have. <clears throat> now, if you want to do a locking stitch, you would choose stitch number four. And that is the same needle position, <clears throat> it just, all that means is now when you have this on, it does a locking stitch. So this is what it looks like. Notice also, I'm holding my thread tail when I first start sewing for the first couple of stitches. That's just a good habit to have. It helps keep the loose thread tail from being drawn down inside the machine. Especially important if you don't have any fabric there. So, so it makes a little bit of a knot there. And at the end, I press this button. It makes a little bit of a knot. No, no, I don't have my foot on the on the foot control on the pedal. It just did that after I touched that button. So what that does is it makes a little knot stitch. You can see the little knot on the back of the fabric. That's a little bit less noticeable than your back stitch, but the back stitch is also going to be a little bit more sturdy. So it depends whatever one you want is whichever stitch you choose and turning that on. Now, turning that off means we can just stitch straight without the uh, locking stitch or the back stitch either with either three or four. So, let me show you also what stitch number five is like. Stitch number five is a really useful one. Notice it put our needle into the left hand position. I can still move my needle over. I happen to know it's 3.5 here, I'll give you an idea. 3.5 is center needle position, so I'm at five. I wanna move that needle over so it's in the middle. I can certainly do that. Just press and hold, there we go. Now, the nice thing about this stitch is it sews two stitches forward and one back. 
which gives some stretch to the stitch. Now this is a fairly stable twill that I'm sewing on. Watch what it does. Two stitches forward, one stitch back. Now I'm gonna really let it go here a little bit faster. And notice every stitch is locked. So you really don't need to have any kind of back stitch there. The nice thing about this stitch is it's stretchy. It's strong and stretchy. So it's, this is a great one to use in backpacks or purses or in that back crotch seam of pants where you've got a little bit of stretch on the curve of the seam, that's gonna stay put. Just keep in mind, once you've got this on there, it's a bear to take out. So make sure you've got it marked with little uh, <clears throat> dots where you want your stitching line to go. This is a great one for thicker denim -y type fabrics. Your number six stitch is the one that you'd wanna use for your knits if you wanna have a little stretch. And basically what it is, is a bent zigzag. So I'll show you what that looks like. It takes a stitch to the side and then a stitch forward. Let's go a little bit more here. Now this doesn't put as much thread into your fabric, which is why it's good for knits, but it does give a stretchy seam. I'm doing it, sewing it on the bias so you can see how it stretches. So those are both good stitches to use. But again, keep in mind, this stitch is also gonna be a hard one to, um, to take out. So if you're not sure whether you want to have your seam in a certain place, use your regular stitch, maybe uh, lengthen your stitches. You can do it right here and have it like a basting stitch and then try your garment on if that's where you want it to be. Then you can take out your basting stitch or just mark where you have it and then take it out and then use your um, stretchy stitch. Okay, so that's your basic sewing. Now what about quilting? Quilt piecing, a lot of you like to quilt. You like to do piecing like this and you wanna have a nice, even, neat quarter inch seam and then also part of quilt piecing is having a shorter stitch length. Right now on, okay, and by the way, did you see what I did to make that go back to default? I just selected a different stitch and went back to it. Right now, stitch number three, which is my basic garment sewing stitch, is at 2.5, but if I was quilt piecing, I'd want a shorter stitch length. That's because when you're quilt piecing, you're not putting back stitches in there. So a shorter stitch length helps anchor the ends of your stitches. So instead of changing all this around, all I need to do is choose number 15. So let's go on over here to number 15, and that is a shorter stitch length. Also, it has put the needle into the right-hand position, so let's get our pieces of fabric here ready to quilt together. Oh, there we go, I already had some. And all you need to do is put the edge of your fabric right next to the edge of your foot and it's gonna give you a quarter inch seam allowance. Let's see how that works. Gotta kinda of be in front of it a little bit. I'm just gonna stop there, take it out, get my measuring gauge. You all have something like this. Measure that right down to a quarter of an inch and measure it. No, oh, it's easier to see on this side. There it is, an exact quarter inch. That's beautiful. So you can see just choosing stitch number 15 is all you need to do. You don't need to do any other settings. However, you can make a scant quarter inch seam by simply moving your needle over a little bit more. I'm gonna move using the, the width button, moving that over a little bit more. You can do that and still sew with the edge of your fabric right along the edge of the foot. So you can see this is a really neat, neato shortcut to be able to do your quilt piecing. You can also do free motion quilting, and I talked about that a little bit on my um, overview video, but you would use your this lever back here, a switch to lower the feed dogs on that. Okay, so um, to get back into regular s sewing, and it just, there we go, right into that there. Now let's say I wanted to have these little bumblebees here and instead of circling my jog dial, I would just go backwards to 64. There we go, and that's what it is. So this is 
a great way to use your machine, use it efficiently and quickly. Um, Another thing about the stitches is in the middle of your book, open it up right here where you can see the staples. This starts a stitch chart, which is really, really helpful. It shows what the stitches look like, the picture of them right here, the stitch number, the foot to use, which is already up here. But here it tells you what those stitches are good for. Really nice and helpful. And then this gives you a stitch width. Now on some of your decorative stitches, you can't widen them past a certain point, like for instance, if it has a little heart that it's making, it would distort it too much if you widened it or lengthened it too much. So that's why in some cases it has a limit to how far you can adjust it. But this is a really useful chart to have. I invite you to study it to look and see what's available. So if you found this video to be helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our Montevilla YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.